Hey guys, before we continue, just a small warning. People with epilepsy, I think it would be a good idea if you would skip the music sections of the show or at least don't look at the visualizations. Looking at the visuals are awesome, I agree with you, it's very mesmerizing but it could be dangerous and I don't want to be the reason for you having a fit. I do apologize for any inconvenience but if you want to listen to the music, listen to it. Otherwise, skip it. Thanks, guys. Thanks for your support. On with the show. This is the future. Evolution. Well, hello, guys, and welcome back to my channel. And this is Crypt Zone Live. Um... Hopefully I will go really live really soon. The area has finally become live on the fiber and um, I just, uh, I'm in the process of cancelling my LTE which was uh, since yesterday and hopefully if it's cancelled by the first I will see if I get any new data or not and if not then uh, I can get my fiber and it will hopefully be installed then by the end of next week and then we can really do this thing like it's supposed to be then we can live stream most of the games and most of the stuff that i do but until then this was the best way i can do it because it's a, it's a saturday i'm working night shift i just worked night shift last night i still don't have really any good internet so i'd rather just do it like this and and you know you get a better experience i think so uh yeah coming up in the show let's see Third alcohol ban fear caused huge liquor store queues on Tuesday. So the petrol price is going down for September. And here are some of the rumored prices that you're going to pay. Driving with J9. If your vehicle license expires after August, there's no 90 days grace for you. A father kills his children because he was angry at his wife. Government plans to use South African retirement fund and what it means for your money. So I want you guys to sit back, relax, and enjoy some copy-free music with me, as well as some of the news that was trending in this week. And uh, let's start off with our first song. Breathless feels like I can feel the sweet release 
Bye guys. Subscribe to my channel now so that you do not forget. Hit that bell icon and get notified of my further uploads. Lastly, feel free to comment. Show me some love by giving me a thumbs up at the end of the video. Well, and you're back. So, um, as you guys have noticed, I'm not playing 10 songs anymore at the moment because of all the extra adverts that I've put in. It, uh, I still work within my time constraint. So I don't want to put in too much songs. So I'm playing about, today I think it's going to be like 6 songs that I'm going to play. So, uh, yeah, just one of those things. So let's kick off with our first story that we have here. Okay, so last week, Tuesday, or in the week Tuesday, there were people standing outside of the liquor stores again in queues. Man, my sister even phoned me and told me I better go and buy myself a bottle because they're going to close the places at four. There's going to be another ban happening. And of course, nobody's going to question it because it happened before. So uh, we started investigating and we got news from uh, people that saying that it's a false news. Even Radio Jacaranda reported it's false news. But it didn't prevent the people from standing outside the doors. So uh, the question is, who spread the rumor? I've got a sneaking suspicion it was the liquor traders themselves that spread this rumor. I mean, what is the quickest way to make money? It was a convenient payday for most of the people in South Africa. Liquor ban happened before, so who's to question it happening again? And what is the quickest way to make money than to spread false rumor of another ban? The people were probably buying up five, six thousand bucks worth of drinks every shopper that came in there. I think they made all their money back in millions and millions of rands in one day. I'm sure they made everything back that they almost lost within the lockdown period. So, uh, well done, liquor traders. Well played. Really well played. Please head over to my webpage at www.cryptzone.co.za and come and check out the page. You will notice there is a lot of information on there. Hyperlinks are provided so that you don't have a problem going anywhere. Head up to my podcast page and come and see what am I currently working on on my podcast. There is also 
the CryptZone live page, which I will update regularly to let you know when I'm going to do the next show like this one. The goal is to try and do one every week. Head on over to my CryptZone YouTube page and come and check out what are the latest videos that I am working on and also what new videos is up and coming. If you have any queries or questions, don't hesitate to ask. You can email me at shell.reaper at gmail.com. Second story, uh, driving with J9. If your vehicle license expires after August, there's no 90 day grace. Motorists have until the end of August to renew lockdown expired light vehicle licenses. I'm one of them. My vehicle license expired on the 31st of August. Um, of July, sorry. So, uh, I have to get my license as soon as possible. It's one of those things. Learners and driver's license cards, which expires from the 26th of March up to the, um, up and including the 31st of August, have until January 2021 to renew. Motor trade numbers licenses, grace period extends to an end of November 2020. So at least those licenses were extended, but for the guys who are having um, their vehicle license discs expiring, you're going to have to pay and you're going to probably get a, a fine if it's late. So I'm probably going to get a fine because I'm only going to try and get my license now. There's just one week left to go before the end of August. So I'm anticipating vehicle license queues to be exceptionally long these next few days. There are literally only five working days left to count. There also still seems to be massive confusion about vehicle license renewals and grace periods. Now if you're like me, who knows someone, you don't have to go stand into a queue. <laughs> I've received a whole bunch of new queries from readers during this past week and it's safely to say it's more than disconcerting, so let's explain this again. Last week we discussed renewing the vehicle license via a third party company which operates via WhatsApp in Gauteng and the Free State but even if you're using the alternate alternative option it's cutting it's rather short. Yeah, if you're living in Gauteng, so Pretoria, Joburg area, you guys are so freaking lucky. You can walk into any post office, put your papers down, pay your money and get your license. Us little fucknuts living here in, in Pumalanga have to go to the municipalities, stand in queues, fill in forms, pick a number, because this bloody place is so scared they're going to lose too much money if they move over to the um, post office system that the other um, provinces are using. So fucked up. They are putting us through all this nonsense and expecting us to be happy about it when people in Gauteng can just walk in, swipe a card and they've got their licenses. It's just fucking stupid. Here it even says, if you live in Gauteng, Eastern Cape, Northern uh, West, Free State or KwaZulu-Natal, you can also renew your vehicle license at selected South African post offices. If your vehicle license expired, any time from 26 March up to and including the 31st of August, these licenses will be valid up to the 31st of August. This means motorists have until the due, uh, date to renew, uh, this date to renew without being penalized or charged arrears fees. I've also heard from motorists who say some of them have been charged penalties and as soon as I have a classification on the matter I'll inform all of our readers. It will also be interesting to see just how much those motorists who have been unable to renew the vehicle license in the extended period would be charged when renewed from September. I can tell you now. My mother-in-law just went to take out her license and it expired a bit earlier within the lockdown and she had to pay an 800 rand fine. Even though it falls within the grace period that they gave us, saying that it will not be charged, they still charge you a fine. However, if your license expires 31 August or after that, technically the 21 day grace period should still apply. It's important to note that there will no longer be a 90 day grace period after 31 August, as most readers seem to believe. The 90 day grace period was given after the hard lockdown restrictions were lifted and was initially only for licenses which expired during the lockdown between 26 March and 31 May. This was then extended until the end of August for vehicle license renewals. So you guys that have expired licenses since the beginning of lockdown, your time is up. I'm sorry to say it's weekend now, it's kla. Yeah? Unless you all want to go on Monday, uh, that's going to be so stupid. The January 2021 extension only applies to expired learners 
or driver's licenses which have expired during 26 March and 31 August 2020 and does not apply to the vehicle license. Okay, so that's that then. So if you want to go for PDP or your normal license, you still have enough time. But if it's your car vehicle disc, your time is up. My time is up. We're in shit. So, anyway, what's not up and not finished yet is some good music. So, listen to this next tune. And uh, this is Cryptzone Live, and our next story is a bit of a depressing story and also very just fucked up because it pisses me off to the very fucking core of myself. <laughs> so a father killed his children out of anger for his wife. 
Now, I promise you this is not the first time I've read this or heard about this. Um, it's happened before where a father argues with a mother and then he took his two-year-old and threw her in a swimming pool because he was angry at the mother. Needless to say, the child died. Fucking, I don't know. Where's the morals? Huh? If you're angry at your wife, be angry at your wife. What the hell did the child do to you? Really? That guy must just go and fuck himself. I hope he gets the fullest extent of the law. But anyway, back to the story. So Father Nopopo apparently killed his children because <clears throat> he was angry at the mother. Senyatsi Lucas Pasha. That's the guy's name. He is being accused of killing his nine-year-old, Katlejo, Joyce, who is seven years old, Tsepo, who is five years old, and Adal, who is three years old. And he killed them with an axe. And Adal, he killed with a big rock because she's three years old. So it was easy to just smash her head in with the, with the rock. You know. He was in uh, the courts last week looking for um, bail, but at least that was um, denied. The case is continuing within the high courts in Polokwane. So the reason why he killed his children, according to this news piece, is that the father accused the mother of cheating on him. And then he killed the children for it. He also wrote on social media that his wife was cheating on him. And that she actually infected him with um, AIDS because of her cheating around. And that he also threatened that she will never see the children again. Uh, this guy was just fucking totally crazy. He wrote on the, on the social media that she's messing around with him. He even posted a photo of her saying that she's got AIDS and she's sleeping around. Let's try and then... Uh, Enjoy this next song and get this thing out of our head.
So welcome back guys, this is Crips on Live and our next piece of information will be the government's plan to use South African Retirement Fund and what it means for your money. So if you um, are a regular visitor to my show, you'll notice that we have spoken about it a few weeks back where I said that they are planning on using our money for their projects. And that if you also plan on going away or um, immigrating overseas, you will not get your money for the next three years after you retire because they want to use your money to get their own asses out of the fire. In other words, you're not going to get a cent of your, of your pension. So the ANC Economics Chief Inok Godongwana says his party is moving away from the idea that prescribes assets used as a policy tool and is instead focusing on changes to Regulation 28 of the Pension Fund um, Act. The regulation currently limits the extent to which retirement funds can be invested in particular assets or in particular asset classes. The main purpose is to protect the member's retirement. However, financial experts posted that changing Regulation 28 is an unnecessary move. Oh, so let's just steal the money without changing the policy. That's nice. While greater clarity and flexibility is always welcome, changing Regulation 28 is probably unnecessary, said Alan Gray, analyst Sandy McGregor. McGregor said that the pension funds are already investing in infrastructure through debt securities issued by peristalsis such as ESCOM, Transnet, the Trans uh, Chaldean Tunnel Authority and the South African National Road Agency, Sunroll. The discussion about changing Regulation 28 is therefore the wrong discussion. The problem is not, nor has it been, the availability of the funds, but the lack of suitable projects. So McGregor said that over the last decade, state institutions tasked with infrastructure development have been crippled by gross emission management and endemic corruption. Most public sector institutions have become investable, uninvestable with other government guarantees, he said. So what is the way forward? McGregor said that the way to get investments going again is to fix the various state institutions involved in infrastructure and give them the greater freedom to recruit private sector skills and resources to fulfill their mandate. Viable projects can be financed whether to it be banks, pension funds or other saving institutions. Non-viable projects should not proceed in the first place, but if they are judged to be in the public interest, they should be financed by the state. McGregor said that currently Regulation 28 is a, uh, a prudential and not an economic requirement. He added that the National Treasury and Reserve Bank have long been opposed to subjecting pension funds to prescribed asset regulations. This would be a wasteful application of South Africa's inadequate savings and have a cost in the form of lower economic growth and reduced pensions. Subsequently, the ANC economic chief, Enoch Godongwana, has said the ANC is moving away from the idea that prescribed assets be used as a policy tool Rather, it wishes to create an environment in which pension funds, trustees can invest in infrastructure projects, providing they are profitable. To get through what are going to be difficult times, we need an efficiently operating capital market, which the Treasury can access as it has in the past. So yeah, there goes your pension money, huh? Lacquer. Anyway, let's listen to this tune, and then I'll be back with some petrol news. Turn toward me and look so weak. I never see you with such tired eyes. And everything we said we'd be, we just traded for a suit coat and a tie.
Lay back and take your socks and shoes right off That natural light is so damn polite Can make you feel just like you were young Again Standing underneath the rows of trees I can see where the ocean meets the sky Under our clothes, a fire grows We are ready for this life of running wild So September fuel prices, some good news for diesel consumers. Well, not just for the diesel guys, but I'm sure the rest of you will also have some good news. So let us quickly see. The diesel price decrease of around 19 cents a litre, while 95 unleaded petrol looks like to drop by about 4 cents. However, the cheaper 93 octane petrol that's available in the inland regions is expected to increase in price by six cents a liter so it's not all good news for everyone so if the above is true a liter of 95 unleaded petrol will now cost you 14 and 43 at the coast and 15 rand 11 inland while 93 will rise to 14 rand 94 so yeah let's hope it's going to decrease that is just uh, uh, more or less an idea of what it's going to be it's not uh, set in stone okay Told myself to push and never stop I've been stressed out Watching both these hands around the clock With my eyes wide Trying to get the panorama shot Whole world getting blurry to me Answers getting lost So I watch my back and keep it moving to the front And remember that the world's yours Do it how you want You've been waiting here for too long Think it's time for you to move on Realize that there's real lives And these real times will be strong I've been waiting all my life And it was right before my eyes Watching all this time Watching time fly by might be the hardest thing I have to do in life. Frustrated that I ain't where I want to be yet. But I know that I'm going to make it if I chase that check. Yes. Cause I done seen a time go by for too many years now when the stars were aligned. Cause I done seen a time go by. Yeah, I done seen a time go by. I've been waiting all my life and it was right before my eyes. Watching all this time flip by Now I realize I've been waiting all my life And it was right before my eyes Watching all this time flip by Now I realize You know I've been waiting
But anyway, guys, thank you for watching my show. Uh, if you enjoyed this, please give me a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe to this channel and hit that bell icon if you want to get notified of any further um, videos like this. Um, hopefully by next Saturday, uh, I'd rather do one like this again or be going live. And the weeks after that will probably be going live as well. So hold thumbs for me. Let's hope I can get the, the internet fixed and uh, that we can get the streaming going. So until next time, guys. Cheers.